Well, I'll just go back in the 60s when the, uh, when we found out that he was teaching a Hong Kong cha-cha dance, and so we invited him over to our club. And that's the first time I met him. Of course, I figured he was a good dancer, and that's about it. I never dreamed that he'd going to be a martial artist until during the intermission time, he went through a few moves, and uh, it was quite impressive. After the uh, dance session was over with, I, I got him aside, and I said, what kind of martial art is that? So he called it Wing Chun. And see, I says, I like to move. I says, uh, it's something that I never seen before. So we got talking about he's going to uh, 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 to Seattle, and uh, I said, when you're back this way, I would like to get a group and have you for our instructor. So that was a beginning that uh, I I got acquainted with Bruce that he was a martial artist not just a good dancer. I never dreamed that he could be that fast. That would impress me that uh, someone that I'd never seen make him move as fast as that. At first, he screened everybody that, that come to the class. Of course, we only had about five, later on six, and then later on we got some from the Oakland Police Department, and uh, of course, like, like like I say, he screened people. Is that they ask him, "What do you want to learn uh, martial art for?" See, and if you give a wrong answer, like I'm going to beat up my neighbor's kids or something, like, then he, he wouldn't accept you. And as an instructor, well, it's, it's really something. He's so strict doing our exercise first, and, and exercise is really <laughs> strenuous. But we went through it, but he was a, a really good teacher. He, he teaches self-discipline and uh, he have a good attitude, and is pliable. And really, uh, everything I learned from China, it just went down the drain. What he teaches me is just out of this world, and I, I figure that I'm gonna accomplish quite a bit from him. My personal JKD is that what Bruce taught me is so precise and so shortcut, and everything is on center line, and and uh, there's no waste of movement, and is that uh, I think that's the ultimate. I I don't think I can learn any more about martial art is what he taught me, and I. I cherish that, and he's going to stay with me as long as I live. Bruce was quite an interesting guy, like I say. When we go to lunch or dinner, he's always getting napkins and start sketching. I made a, the punching bag for him that, that he usually punches while he eats. It's just a small little bag. At first it filled with beans and then later on he end up filling with uh, BB shots. And then the food he eats, he only have the same thing all the time. I, he never changes that, a bottle of Coke and soy sauce, uh, uh, Beef, soy, uh, beef, oyster sauce, and rice. And that seemed like that's his diet. And uh, like I say, after, after dinner or after lunch, we'd go walk uh, through Chinatown, and, and he's always on the move. And like I say, uh, if there was a uh, pot of flour in the, in the sidewalk with uh, like a tree like, he would punches those leaves, he kicked at it. And I said, I, I never met a guy that moves so much. He, he, ne he never uh, stands still, he's always moving. If he's gonna punch you in the arm, he'll punch you in the arm, you know. 
but he's not going to hurt you. But he's a playful guy. And <laughs> he's <laughs> well, one in a million because uh, the guy is so playful and uh, it's, 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 it's really a, a comical to, to be with a guy like him. Yeah, he's so, you know, down to earth, low key. And like I say, if he, if he, he likes you, I, you know, he'll do anything for you. Through the Green Hornet set, we, we would uh, be one in a mob scene or, or uh, moving the, the Black Beauty, the, the car with him in it, and uh, how, they, how they film uh, the action of him and uh, uh, the Green Hornet, uh, go to the, the driving scene. And then uh, after lunch break, why I couldn't believe it. All, all the, the worker there, like the script boy and the whatever, that the script girl, they all learn to, learn to kick like he does. And it's really fun that uh, the whole crew would go through a session like that, and it really cracks me up. And then later on, after uh, the, uh, the scene was over with, we went to visit the other studio of uh, Batman and, and, and Robin. And then went to uh, uh, Peyton Place and, and meet all the rest of the movie stars. Because like Bruce, uh, he just liked to show us off. And uh, we had a great time. Well, everybody admired him, uh, what he can do as a martial artist. Uh, I mean, uh, people in those days couldn't believe that a guy like Bruce can do what he what he what he can do, and uh, as a matter of fact, he brought martial art into this world, and uh, people admire him because uh, he's really good. See, back in those days, you, you, you hard to find any training equipment at, at any sporting goods store, so, well, we went the hard way, so we have to build our own. And uh, although it's primitive, but it's workable. And, uh, and he, he got all kind of ideas, and whatever he needed to build up his hands, or build up his wrists, or build up his midsection, he was thinking about, let's see what we can do about this, see? Not just doing sit up and all, but let's uh, think of something that can build up our, our uh, forearm, we say. So we got the idea of making this wrist roller and a uh, gripping machine. And uh, we go through the bo drawing board quite often. We made one, and now it's not gonna work. Let's get to improvise and uh, do it better. So that's how we make our equipment is that we make a drawing, we don't know what size is it, after I make it, and he wasn't satisfied, or maybe it should be a little heavier, or the handle should be a little longer, then we go through it again and make it until we perfected this piece of equipment, and he's happy. And uh, we had a great time doing these things. Of course, you're gonna find out how, we, how this started between Bruce and I about building things is that when we had the school in in Oakland, he he had he kept all his receipts in a in a, in a, in a shoe box, a paper shoe box, and I said that's no good. So I made him a couple of metal boxes, and he said, "Hey, you do this kind of stuff?" I said, "Yeah, it's part of my trade." And from then on, he got the ball rolling, and so all this equipment came into light. It's this axe that he wanted it. So I, it was when when I had it had it made. It was you know in, uh, at the foundry as a mow. I I made the mow. So after he came out of the foundry, it was so rough. So I had to did a lot of filing and a lot of grinding and get nice and smooth. So I can put it into this long uh, staff. It's a beautiful job. 
but by that time, he already went to Hong Kong for the, for the, uh, they wanted him over there to do movie. So I said, I'm going to keep it here until he comes back. And uh, it was all made out of brass. It was a beautiful piece of equipment. That's the thing that he always liked. And another time, he wanted, I wanted a, a sword. I said, I couldn't make a sword. <laughs> so I, I, went, I, I went down to Chinatown and, and, and bought a sword. And I, I never forgot that we went on the plane there. The, the stewards said, yeah, you can't bring that on board. You better let it put it aside. I, I told her, I said, I can't let go of this. And she said, OK. I, she, she said, you're responsible for it. I kept that. It's, it's about at least five foot long, and I hang on to it all the way from o Oakland to, to L.A. to present it to him. That was, that was for his birthday. I feel great that I can improve his body, and, and uh, I'm really satisfied because, after all, he, he's my Sifu, he's my master. And uh, whatever I did is from the bottom of my heart, and I enjoy doing it. Matter of fact, I've been asking, what else, Bruce, you know? But uh, like I say, it make a better man out of me. I guess that's why I'm living so long. <laughs>